Genesis 22, Isaac and Christ, how they compare Jesus in the Old Testament. Hey, I promise you that you're going to see Isaac as Jesus going up that mountain because he went up that same mountain with his father, Abraham, 2,000 plus years before Jesus was even born. And he was carrying wood on his back. And the father, Abraham, was carrying the torch in his hand and the knife, which speaks of God's wrath. And they went up the mountain, and there was a ram at the top, right? And they found the ram caught in the thicket by its horns, like Jesus having the the thorn crown. And then that lamb, that ram became the sacrificial animal for the sacrifice, right? Isn't this amazing? Jesus is all over the Old Testament, my friend. Please comment with your thoughts and your questions. I love to interact with all of you. I love you. So let's get into this episode, you guys. This is so exciting. Jesus in the Old Testament. We're going to see it right here with Abraham and Isaac going up Mount Moriah, which is the same mountain in Jerusalem before there ever even was a Jerusalem and a temple there like there was in Jesus' day. This is amazing. So here we go into the presentation. So Genesis 22 We see Jesus in the Old Testament. That's what this series is all about. And by the way, you might want to uh, check out the playlist of Jesus in the Old Testament. We've already done a bunch of episodes, and we're going to do a bunch more. So excited about it. But you might want to catch up on some of those if you've missed them. So let's get into this. Here we go. So we know in Luke chapter 24, three days after Passover, when Jesus was crucified, there was two men walking to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles away from Jerusalem, and Jesus joined them incognito. It says they didn't recognize him, but he was speaking and teaching to them about how the Messiah was found in all of the scripture. What was the scripture? The Tanakh, if you're Jewish in Israel, the Old Testament. And Jesus said, these are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things things that are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Was all of it fulfilled when Jesus said that? Not all of it. He's still coming back. And there's a lot of those prophecies and scriptures about him that are still yet to be fulfilled. And it's very exciting because he's going to come back. But Up to that point, he fulfilled a bunch of it, you guys, because of his death and his resurrection. Here in Genesis 22, it's so excited. And here's the scripture. God tells Abraham, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the the land of Moriah. Where was the land of Moriah? Jerusalem. Today, modern-day Jerusalem is the land of Moriah. Take now your son, your only son. What? Your only son, whom you love. That's the first mention of love in the Bible, you guys. When there's a first mention, it's very important that you pay attention to that, right? And go to the land of Moriah, Jerusalem. So where is that? Let's look at it. Here's the globe. Here's the Middle East right here, you guys. Here's Africa, Europe, Asia. Israel is right in the middle. Jerusalem's right in the center of the world, just like God said. But here, where is this land of Moriah? Where is it? It's right in here where where Israel is, you guys. So let's zero in on it. So here's the Dead Sea. Here's the Sea of Galilee. And Jerusalem is right about in here. And this is the land of Moriah. Here's a modern picture of it. These are the hills and the mountains of Mount Moriah where this took place. Pretty amazing stuff, right? Okay. So here we are. Here's an old. So this is the location of Moriah according to the Jewish sources back in 1925. This is a map from way back then. It says Moriah. Where is this? This is the hilltop where the temple was in Jesus' time. And you can see back here, there's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre back here. And this is the place traditionally where the crosses were, where Jesus was crucified and died on the cross and uh, and then was raised again in three days out of the tomb. So 
This is a group of people here looking down on Jerusalem on Mount Moriah. I think they're looking at it from the Mount of Olives, which is just opposite. So Genesis 22 continues on. It says, and offer him. So God's telling him to offer his son, your only son. It wasn't his only son. He had Ishmael too, but Isaac was the son of the promise. And he says, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will tell you. So Abraham, he has the torch in his hand, and Isaac has the wood on his back, right? And it, imagine if these, this group of people here in Jerusalem were watching this, this movie play out, and behind them was the very mountain. Can you imagine seeing that? And imagine it, Jesus going up this mountain, right? The temple was actually right here at one time, maybe right in this area, and Right up here was Golgotha or Mount Calvary, where he carried the wood on his back. Remember, Isaac was carrying the wood on his back, right? So Abraham got up early in the morning and he saddled his donkey. Here's a, a picture of what from Abraham's time or maybe Joseph's time from Saqqara, Egypt, of what the Hebrews actually look like. This is a painting on one of the walls in Saqqara, Egypt from the ancient Egyptians. And here's a donkey here. And they believe that this is a Semitic person from like a Hebrew person here. And he's got a lyre. Just kind of a cool little side note there. So Genesis 22, it says, continues on. It says, on the third day, look at all the symbolism in this. The third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from the distance. So he saw Mount Moriah from the distance, you guys. And it says, I and the boy will go over there and we will worship and return to you. So Abraham, God tells him to sacrifice his only son, right? He called him his only son, whom you love, first mention of love. And then Abraham has faith. What does he say? We will worship and we will return to you. Abraham had faith. He knew that God was going to keep his boy alive somehow. So and Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. Here it is again, you guys, this old traditional picture of Abraham and Isaac. And by the way, he wasn't a little boy. Um, he could have been uh, in his 20s, a full-grown man, which is probably more likely. And what did Abraham have in his hand? The torch, speaking of God's wrath, and the knife. Remember, Jesus was pierced on his side. And what did Isaac carry up the mountain, the very mountain Jesus walked up? The wood on his back. Does that not speak of Jesus? I can imagine on that road to Emmaus, Jesus taking those two men through this story. And perhaps as they were walking out of Jerusalem to Emmaus, about seven miles away, as Jesus taught where he was found in the Old Testament, I would imagine they may have walked right by where the crosses were. Perhaps they saw the wood and they remembered Jesus had the wood on his back. Maybe Jesus was telling them in disguise, telling them about Abraham and Isaac walking up that same mountain as they walked. Who knows? That's my conjecture, but you know, you never know. Maybe that is how it happened. We'll see someday in, in heaven. And so the two of them walked on together. And, and Isaac says to him, Father, or excuse me, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Remember that? He said that on that very mountain. But here in Genesis says, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. So they both spoke to their father. Jesus spoke to his father as they were crucifying him. Here Isaac speaks to his father as he is about to become the sacrifice as far as he knows. And he said, my father. And Abraham said, here I am, my son. And he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Good question. I'd be asking the same thing, wouldn't you? I'd be like, uh, father, where's the lamb? Because I really don't want to die today. There's an amazing thing that's about to happen that you're going to see. This will blow your mind. Okay, watch this. Let's get back into the scripture. Here it is. Here it is, my friend. This is so good. The Lamb of God. Jesus was called what? The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, right? And Abraham answered Isaac and he said, God will provide for himself the Lamb for the burnt offering, my son. God will provide for himself the lamb, right? God the Son, Jesus, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Later on, he would be the lamb that would be the the substitution sacrifice for you and for me, for our sins, instead of us having to go through hell that Jesus went through and the, the full wrath of God upon us, which we couldn't even handle, Jesus took it for us. But you have to believe in him. If you don't believe in him, you can still have the full wrath of God. I promise you would not enjoy that. And you may want to give your life to God if you haven't. And you'll have an opportunity at the end of this to give your life to Jesus Christ, to become born again, saved by God. And you won't have to worry anymore. You won't have to try and earn your way to heaven to be good enough. You you were accepted as you are. God cleans you up. You come to him with your sins and all that. He cleans you up. And then you start to walk with him and obey him and follow him. And good works will follow with that. So, all right, you guys, you'll have that opportunity later. So, Let's get into the uh, presentation some more. God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So Abraham built the altar there, right, out of wood, and he arranged the wood, and he bound his son. Jesus was bound, right? And Isaac, his son Isaac, and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Remember Jesus when he was crucified? That's how they did it back then. They would lay you on the cross and they would hammer the spikes into your hands and probably ropes too around your arms. He was laid upon the wood. You guys see the picture in this? This is amazing, you guys. You can't deny it. It's just, it's just too clear. And, and a lot of people say that it's, well, it's not clear in the Old Testament where Jesus is unless you're a Christian. Well, that may be true. When you're a Christian, God opens your eyes. And you may want to ask him, Lord, open my eyes. Don't let Satan blind you. That's what he's good at doing. You don't want that, you guys. So let's get back into it. So there was the the wood, and Isaac was laid upon the wood, right? And you're going to see this too, this, this thorn and a crown of thorns and how it plays into the story as we move on. Here we go. And Abraham reached out with his hand, and he took the knife to slaughter his son, But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven, and he said, Abraham, Abraham, do not reach out your hand against the boy, and do not do anything to him. For now I know that you have you fear God. That means like you respect or you reverence God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Whoa. Wow. What happens over 2,000 years later? Jesus, God's only son. God did not withhold him, but he sent him to die on the cross for us. So then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram. That's a type of sheep, right? A ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So a male sheep caught in the thicket by its horns. Remember, Jesus wore a crown of thorns. Whoa. Isn't that amazing, the symbolism there? Jesus was caught up on his head by the crown of thorns. The curse was placed upon him. Remember, the curse brought the thorns. Amazing, amazing stuff. God is so good that he did that for us. And Abraham went and he took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering, here it is, in the place of his son. So we too, Jesus is our substitute to take the wrath of God. He took the wrath of God for you if you were willing to believe in him and receive his forgiveness and receive this relationship that he offers to you. Why would you not want it? It's a mystery. I don't understand why anybody would deny that and and say no to that. Crazy stuff, guys. So in the place of his son, he sacrificed the ram. And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. Does he ever? The Lord will provide. About 2,000 years later, Jesus was on the cross on that same mountain, Mount Moriah. And the forgiveness of sins was made possible by what he did on the cross on that Passover day. As it is said to this day on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Jesus 
in the Old Testament. Don't you love it? So good, is it not? Jesus in the Old Testament. Hey, as promised, if you have not given your life to Jesus and you feel, you're feeling that God may be knocking right now, he could be knocking on the door of your heart saying, I'm speaking to you. Would you like to receive me? Receive forgiveness. Receive life abundantly forever and ever, living forever in heaven with God. The most beautiful garden restored and, and with Jesus and loved ones. Would you like that? I don't know why anybody wouldn't. Then you could have it by praying to God. You are going to be praying to God. I could lead you in the prayer. And you're saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner, and I want to follow you, Jesus, and I want you to be my Lord and Savior. You're going to invite him into your life to be, to rule your life, to be your Lord and your Savior. Would you like that? Okay. Well, repeat these words after me. You are praying to God. Here we go. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I am sorry for my sin. Please help me to turn from my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive today. I believe that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I put my faith in him. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. If you did that and you meant it, God has forgiven you. You're a new creature, a new creation, born again to new life as a child of God. Congratulations, my friend. Hey, comment down below if you did that or comment with your questions or your comments. I'd love to answer each and every one of you. I love you. And remember, we're doing a series, Jesus in the Old Testament. And you might want to click on that playlist right there and you'll get all the latest episodes. You won't miss a thing. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down here and the bell. You won't miss anything. I love you.